Now, yeah, but do you agree? That last call with Dak Prescott. Oh my God, that was crazy. That was terrible. Wasn't it? I don't, look, I don't even know why they did that. Kenny want to make sure that as we walk out of here, y'all get y'all flowers. That we while y'all here don't get in no trouble. What's up? Ahead of time. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You apologizing ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't want to hear this ten years later. <laughs> Yeah. Everything that we do exclusive Make sure that it's all inclusive I was taught make no excuses As a man you can't be useless Man up cause these people ruthless Down these thoughts clueless Lobster Mac I'm up at Roof Chris from my tone you peep the smoothness In this world you get the loot Then your dreams is gonna be lucid Fool me one time shame on you Second time you gonna be foolish All that BS for the birds that come to me I'm chucking deuces I stay loyal to the soil You never out here breaking truces On this road it's bumps and bruises Either you move smart or stupid Nike's on my yeah, and I got a couple sushis. So I guess they want us to start with introductions. Yeah, right. Yeah. My name is Chris. My uh, wife on the show is Lee. We have two kids, one in the house, one outside of the house before I met my wife. My name is Damon. Um, Simone is the yang to my yang. And uh, I'm a father of six children, of which I am the father. Uh, me and Simone have zero children together. Kenneth Thornton. Um, I know Willie. Actually, I know all the ladies. Uh, my wife, Marcia, she's not here. Um, good friends for at least, well, me and Willie known each other forever. Um, but I've known the ladies for at least 25 years, 25, 26 years. My name is Willie. My show host is Jennifer. I'm her husband. We have four kids, three in the house and one in LSU. I believe you've seen her on the show already. Yeah, she was in it last week, I think. Yes. Week before last, yeah. She did a great job, too. You know? Thanks. Yes. Yeah. So we got, like, uh, from what we were told, 33 questions here. We're going to try to get through as many of them as we can. Before um, we do it, let's have, like, a male's prayer. Oh, uh, <laughs> male's prayer. <laughs> yeah. All, right. Well, well, all right. Let us pray that what we say today <laughs> don't change our sex life. <laughs> <laughs> and don't, we, look, don't hold it against you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we continue to get meals and, and, and don't hear this 10 years later. <laughs> Remember when you went on that show? Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to hope that uh, all of your spouses know what you're going to say because you had conversations about That's it before it. now. Man. Yeah, yeah. You might have had the discussion about it. Prepare no. And we don't roll our boys on the show. Exactly. <laughs> Think about what right. you're going to say before you say it. Yes, right. Sir. So the first question here is what is a damn dynamic? of your blended family so for me like i said we have a uh, my wife and i have a son together and then i had a daughter before we met so my daughter is now 19 she's going to college and um you know um it's been a like the the dynamic has been difficult at times you know so that's good reason why we're here to kind of talk about how those things have gone for each one of us now how old was she when when you met alethea because that's key she was I think two, okay. right around two years old. Okay. Somewhere thereabouts. Only reason I was saying that because I, I was thinking about this coming over here. I believe that if the kid's younger, it's a little bit better because normally yeah. it's a little bit better yeah. because you don't have the knowledge of the other person as much. You get to learn both parents at the same time, opposed to a child being like 12 and you've yeah. been with this, the mother forever, and now you introducing a whole new person, and it's like, I don't like them automatically, because I think naturally our kids want to be what they want Parents. us to be with, you know, their mother. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? So I think that was probably good, hopefully, you know, that's, normally. Yeah, that's true. So it's a good point, and I know this is probably one of the questions, but maybe we start off with a little bit of a discussion, right? Like, we mm-hmm. don't have to be this structure, but because when you say that, like, they start off, like, when I met my wife, right, my daughter, I think, was two years old or a year and a half. I'd have to figure out the timeline. I might get in trouble for that one, but that's all right. Um, <laughs> they um, they started off with this like great relationship, mm-hmm. you know, and you know, over the years, it kind of it kind of changed a little bit, you know. But you know, and and I think, like I said, there's a lot of questions here. But the one thing, like thinking about this, that I had on my mind is like each one of us have like a certain thing that bothered him the most about being a parent that doesn't have their kid in the household right and so like the thing that you know like i tell people all the time like it's better you know obviously if you 
find someone that you're really going to spend the rest of your life with and then start having kids with them mm -hmm. because then you don't have to deal with it because it, it could be rough. Yes, it can. You know, it could be rough. I know that there's it's probably one of the most difficult things I've definitely ever dealt with on my life. And it's not like a short term, like you could take a hit for a short period of time, get over it, have a short memory, you know, and just keep moving on. But mm -hmm. when it comes to the kids, it's life, yeah, you know, what do you guys think? What do you, what's like, well, you let's talk about the structure of your years. Well, first. right now the dynamic of our uh, blended family is um, I have a 17 year old son. He is the youngest of the six, the last of the Mohicans. And, um, for the past three years, four years that we've been in the household, um, it started off rocky uh, a little bit. And that's just because he was coming of age. He didn't want to leave home, didn't want to leave his friends. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it, it, it became a little friction with him and Simone. I think not so much of a, um, a dislike, but just homesick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so so that, you know, that kind of rubs off on what you think is whose fault it is and, you know, yeah. and what it revolves around us being together. But um, right now we're fine. Um, he's on his way graduating, okay. focus on getting into college. And um, him and Simone is is they they're they're close. It's it's really it's really been smooth after the little bumpy road in the beginning. So that's pretty much it with ours right now. <laughs> Um, I would say mine, mine is uh, I have two kids. Um, I always refer to them as my kids. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Once I made that decision that I'm going to be with you, your child become my child. I don't believe in the step parent. I don't believe in that. Um, I actually believe you show more love to your non-biological uh, son or child than you do your biological. Because at, I've always wanted to make sure that he knew that I loved him just as much as I love my son. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be no, uh, he's better than you because he's my biological. We don't do that. Mm -hmm. um, I actually used to have problems when I first started dating. Um, and they would say, well, my son's mother had three kids. One was mine and the other two weren't. And I've been through it and I've seen it where Christmas time come around and this one person gets something. And I'm looking like, man, as soon as you go to sleep, I'm going to break that. You know what I mean? I ain't got nothing. Ain't nobody going to have nothing. You know what I mean? Or I'm going to be playing with it just as much as you play with it. So I learned that from an early age. So I made sure just because the other two kids weren't mine, when I bought my son something, I bought everybody something. When it was time to go to school, I bought everybody something. And I um, I think me and the fathers have a great relationship. And I told him, I said, look, man, if you need to discipline my son, discipline. You know, no crazy stuff, but yeah. discipline him. It takes a village to raise a child, it and it's it's it hard. Does. So, um, you know, my oldest son, he came in. It was it was a little rocky in the beginning, but I just think because he just he just learned yearned for love, and I let him know like, hey, look, you acting crazy, but I can just get as crazy as you. So, you know, what I mean, let's conversate, let's talk about it, and then ultimately, you know, what I mean, he became you know a great kid because, you know, once you show a kid the way and have the understanding and communicate with them. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, I think the better of them going to come out and show, you know, so that's what I did. All right. My name is Willie. And my sons are older too, so that made it a lot better, 32 and 31. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Willie. I currently have four kids, one kid outside of my marriage. Um, Don't say that like that. No, Zayna. <laughs> Before you got married, because I, I got married. Right, yeah, right, yeah, right. Look, yeah, he, just, uh, yeah, he already got in trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I went on the streets. <laughs> yeah, like, like, you knocked on the door and say, hey, meet Zayna. No, I went out like that. <laughs> you know, Zayna was in Jennifer Life at same as Chris. She was mm. two years old, so mm. she was raised as one of our own, one That's of Jen's own. She was mm. always mine. Um, and it's like Chris say, I, if, if I had to tell a, another man or a young man what to do based on my experiences, I would say, man, if you're going to have a baby by that, like, that woman, if you can stay with her, stay with her. I mm -hmm. say, but it, it ain't perfect. The world ain't perfect. If you got to sure. leave, you got to leave. That's it. But mm -hmm. it's going to it's gonna impact the kid. Mm -hmm. There's no way around it. Yeah. Uh, you could be the best dad. You could buy all the gifts. You could buy all the trinkets and all that stuff. But the bottom line, you're not going to be around the whole time. Mm -hmm. That's true. And, and the kid going to be hurt by it. There's no yeah. way around it. Okay. And yeah. no, that's very true. And like, so 
like I said, we got a list of questions. Okay, yeah, it might be somewhere in the questions. Yeah, it might be somewhere (laughs) in the questions. But, you know, so just thinking about that, like I know each one of us, like, you know, being a father, raising a kid in a separate household, we got our reason for feeling that way because I feel the same way. Like it's hard, especially when you're young. Like if you, you know, you might make an act, you might make an accident, you know, have a baby unexpected, or you might be with somebody and think, I'm going to spend the rest of my life with her and I want to have a family and you might mess that up too. But, you know, being in a kind of having a kid in another house that's not with you and then having a kid that's with me every day, I could see the difference, right? And I knew it was going to be a difference, but I just knew that, you know, it just wasn't going to work out. Right. So I, you know, I had to go, but at the same time, thinking about like the last 20 years, right. Cause my daughter will be 20 in May, you know, and, and all of us, you know, we all got the, you know, those, those things that bothered us the most. And like, for me, you know, I think that, I mean, and let me ask you guys this question. Like, do you feel like based on everything you went through, we all know people that walked away from their kids, right? Now I could mm-hmm. never do it. I could never do it. But we all know people that walked away from the kids. But has there ever, was there ever times where you felt like, you know, my life might be easier if I if I for myself, like if you if you thought well, none of us obviously did. Right. So the, I'm not saying this is what you do. And this is definitely not advice for somebody. Right. Don't do this. <laughs> mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is, have you ever felt that way? Like, so it's been so bad where you've been like, man, this, you know, just. I could see not that I would do it, not mm-hmm. like yeah. not like that you felt that way, but did you ever say but, say I could see why somebody would? During the time of see, um, mm-hmm. so, so I give a little bit of history. I was married for eleven years. Um, I was together with my ex wife. We was together like eighteen years because right. we was high school lovers. You know what I'm saying? Young, you know, thought we knew what we wanted, and actually kind of grew apart as we grew older. But in the midst of that, we had six children together. Um, so during the time of separation, I did feel that way, maybe a little while that it might be easier for me if I just go solo, but the, the overwhelming feeling that I had more so was I'm not going to be able to see my children when I want to. And as a father that was never away from his children ever, that kind of won over the thought of maybe this might be okay. So you stayed for the kids. Um, what actually is what I mean is I fought for my children. Okay. For me to have custody. Okay. And opposed to being like, go ahead, you take the kids. I'll be all right by myself and just do my due diligence of paying child support or whatever and visiting and all that. But I wasn't with that. You know what I'm saying? A lot of men don't take you around. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's easier because yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna lie to you. You, you put yeah. me, you put me on that same scenario. <laughs> not that I walk away, but the younger me, I'd have been like, okay, this is gonna be easier. You go ahead and go stay mm-hmm. with your folks. Um, I'm gonna support you financially yeah. when I get the chance to see you. I'll see you. Um, so um, I commend you for that. Because yeah, yeah. You, you, you basically made your life and your words. Um, not saying that it was harder, but it's harder to do it the way that you did it. Yeah, it you know definitely I mean? was not easy. Being that single you know parent. I mean? No, it definitely Ooh. wasn't easy being a single parent. Of, sure. And we're talking about children from the ages at the time of 16 down to six. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, um, no, nah, it definitely wasn't easy, but I could not see myself not being in control of seeing them. Okay. That's a good thing. You know, that's a blessing. That's a good thing. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't see that. I couldn't see me saying I want to see my son and me going through some bull crap. Yeah. To see my sons. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I had to live that. And I I took some some L's in court (laughs) trying to fight that fight. Yeah. But I know I know you've been through a bunch too, you know. Oh yeah. I took some I took some is when you fighting the, the fight and the court system constantly against you, even if you prove to be the right parent and it's just the doc ain't, it, it ain't, the, the cause ain't, ain't ain't fair for men, even when you try to do the right thing. Right. <laughs> I mean, you, you go to That's court, right. you pay your fees. I mean, you you file for custody because if you really love your child, you're going you gonna to fight the good fight. You're going to file for custody. You're going to do everything you can to get your child. Because especially, I'm not saying I'm the better parent, but I could have put her in a better situation. That's it. And it's yeah, all about the kid. It's all about the kid. It's all, right. It is. Yeah. Yep. And I know her mother loved her to death. Nothing against her mother. I just had a better situation. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to put the child, I can't live in a castle and, and have my child 
in the projects. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I'm not saying I love I, you know n- nothing against you. We we you know me and her mother had had our thing. We had we had a good time. We had bad times. That's life. Yeah. But our child, <laughs> don't okay. think about you. Think about our child. Right. And for me, you know, I was I was fortunate enough to be in a better situation. So I wanted my child in my situation. Yeah, it's hard right. for me to to have this this home, this great environment. And then, then you drive your your child off back to a bad environment, mm-hmm. and you got to leave <laughs> because that's the way the system set up. I have to leave her again in in, in that environment. So, yeah. Yeah, was it easy to walk away? No, because as a child, my parents walked away from me. Okay. So I, I I always said that I'll never do that to my child. That's it. So I didn't. That's good. That's good. Yeah, and and I'll say just like for me. I went to court, you know, a bunch of different times. I've been paying child support for a long time, right? And I never had a problem with it, right? Like, I always figured, like, that money was going to good use. And even if it wasn't, you know, I felt like, you know, you know, it was helping in some way. So I've always been okay with that. But the worst thing for me, like, not having our, you know, you know, everybody has that, you know, in your case, you you went, you got your kids, they're living with you full time, right? That's mm-hmm. great, man. That's awesome. But, you know, in, in, in our case, and I don't know about yours, but I know about yours because that, you know, having the kid in the other household, you know, um, I don't know if it's one of the questions, but I think it's one of the questions in there about like manipulation, right? And like kids are always going to try their hands. So we're as fathers, as parents, we might let our kids get away with only what we're we want them to get away with so a lot of times we know there's some kind of game going on but we're just gonna be like okay you know whatever right and that's a you know that that could be a problem but sometimes it's you're you're like you're just gonna do for them no matter what and even though you know they're on like trying to like uh you know manipulate the situation to get what they want you know that you know that and you're like all right well i was gonna do this anyway so what mm-hmm. difference does it make but for me the bigger, the worst part about like manipulation isn't what the kids try to do, but it's what the moms try to do exactly. the parents. by That's trying so to influence the kid to not to to hate the parent, you know. And I know I lived that for years. I probably still do, you know. Maybe not as much, but I probably still do. And I think for me, that was always the worst thing in the world. Like I've had plenty. Like there was a time where my daughter and her mom were really at each other, like all the time, and. uh I, even in those worst times, I never took advantage of the opportunity mm-hmm. to, you know, to say something negative about her mom, right? To join in on that. Now I know it's been for years. It's been it's been a nonstop about me and my wife for that for that matter, right? But you know, for me, I always wanted her to have a good relationship with her mom, so I never joined into any of that. But I know that over the years you know, it's affected my relationship with my daughter and it's not going to, I mean, yeah, I'll get over it. You know, it is what it is, but it, it, you know, don't don't get me wrong. It hurts, right? Like it hurts to, you know, let, to have somebody doing that to you, even though you've been there for the very, been there since the very beginning, Mm -hmm. never went Mm -hmm. MIA ever. Right. And with all that being said, you still get criticized for every little thing you do. And what can you do? It's a lose, lose situation. And I'm only personally, I'm only going to beat my head against the wall so many times before I'm just like, all right, you got it. I lost. Right. Like you only go. It's, it's only going to happen. But so many times I would say you did the right thing. Um, and I think most of us will say that uh, it's easier to probably say I'm going to ride on that bandwagon and down. Them. But the kids will mm-hmm. remember that more because mm-hmm. they'll be like, well, even you. I would never try to down any, especially the other part, um, the other partner. Because that's that's a lose lose situation. Because mm-hmm. once you start that negativity, uh, it's crazy. Negative will last longer than positive. Mm-hmm. You can do one, you can do a thousand good things. Do one bad thing. A lot of times, people will remember that negative. So that was a good thing that you did that. You did the right thing. Yeah. And as long as you did the right thing, you know, be straight. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's one of those things you can always go back and say, man, that was the right thing to do. Yep. And children don't always see it in the beginning because they're children. Mm-hmm. But definitely when they become adults. They will, they will recognize, um, you know, because that slander most of the time ain't true. You know what I'm saying? So the slander that comes from that other side, it don't even hold up to the actions that are really the good actions that are mm-hmm. being put out there. Yeah. I, you know, I've experienced that also, you know what I'm saying? My ex, you know, when the children go with the ex, just asking questions or just putting stuff in their head. And then they come back and they act funny. 
You know what I'm saying? It's like you've been acting all good for six months. Now, what summertime, you? you come back what after summer you? vacation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you're acting funny. But yeah, definitely. And I was told by elders, don't slant, don't, don't do it. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't, no matter how much she does, just let her do her and you just show and prove and it's going to be what it is. Action you know speak louder than Action words. Speak louder than words. That's it. And see, I never had my daughter full time. I mean, there was, but one, the worst moment for me when I really realized how bad it was is she got in my car, picked her up from school. I can't remember when she was five or six or something like that. And she was real quiet and I kept saying, what's going on? How was your day? You know, and she wouldn't say nothing. Right. And she said, my mommy said that I'm not allowed to talk to you this weekend. Wow. That's how bad it was, right? All week? Wow. All weekend, right? So, and that's just one example. Like, there's, it's, it it went on for, it. like I said, it's probably still going on today. You know, it's just, you know, it's just different, right? Because she's a little bit older. Y'all want to move on? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Let's see if we got a question. I'm just... Did your upbringing increase your want to be in your child's life after you split from your ex? Yes. Definitely. Yeah. I would say yes to that as well. Definitely me. Because I ain't have a father. Me neither. You know, <laughs> my father wasn't around. Now, did you know? Uh, I knew him better than he knew me. Okay. Right? See, see, like, yeah, like, so my father actually lived around the corner from me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um. And I probably, when I was about four or five, I can remember back when I did take a couple trips with him. I had to be about four or five years old. Um, But then after that, kind of disappeared. And there would be times where I would see him and recognize him, but he would not recognize me. Mm, Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like literally sitting on the front step with my homeboy and a grown man walks by and I look and I'm like, yo, that's my pop. You know what I'm saying? And he just kept it moving. Now, do you so think that's that, my life? Did you think that made you a better father? Most definitely. Exactly. But now I had a father figure in my life because mm-hmm. I grew in a house with my grandparents. Okay. With my mom, my grandma, man, my grandpa. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Grandpa firm, you know, real man, Renaissance man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Which was a blessing. But of course, not having that real father figure in mm-hmm. your life, you know what I'm saying? Knowing it's different. It's yeah. different. You know what I'm saying? There's a whole big age gap with your grandfather. And you anyway, you know what I'm saying? So definitely my father being missing definitely made me be a, a, a father, a good father. See, I've never got a chance to meet my father at all. I tell my sons this all the time, how blessed they are. Um, I never even actually even care. I know that might sound crazy mm-hmm. because um, how can I say this? I've always thought if you wasn't in my life, you didn't want to be there. And I don't want nobody in my life that don't want to be there. Yeah. So. I just think it made me a better parent. Ultimately, it made me a better go getter. Mm-hmm. Um, not gonna be like what, what was a movie I was watching, and the guy said, "I'm gonna show you." Uh, was it LeBron James? It was somebody. He said, "I'm gonna show him that you made a mistake not being in my life." I never even had those. I was like, "Well, hey, this is the situation. Press on. You gonna keep living this on or not?" But it made me want to be a better father. Mm-hmm. So that's why I told my kids. I'm not. Matter of fact, I just recently told them that I never met my father. And it was like, wow, I didn't know that. And I was like, this, you guys in an outstanding position mm-hmm. because you both know your fathers. Um, no matter what they do, they still your father. But I didn't have the opportunity yeah. to even meet them. So you guys are blessed. So that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. And I and, and I've had, you know, talked to a couple, had conversations with men that are good, great fathers now. Mm-hmm. And they would say that the reason was because they didn't have their fathers in their life. So they just couldn't see it. I think it's just from that hurt as a child that you don't want to see somebody else your child exactly. hurt from going through exactly. that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I knew my father. Yeah. I still love my father. Yeah, today. I know his father too. Yeah. <laughs> he always used to dog my cars, man. Like yeah, yeah. he's <laughs> crap. I still love my father today, yes, but my father yeah. was always battling his own demons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And okay. those those demons kept him from being a good father. Okay. And therefore Majority of my life was spent with my grandmother as well. Mm. I knew my father. I knew exactly what corner he was on. I could go talk to him. We, yeah. <laughs> we could hatch it out. Yeah. But he was bound his own demons. Mm. No. And see, for me, my parents, I never remember them being together. They got, they split up bef- when I was like two, right? But my dad's always been there. He's always been solid no matter what. Mm. No matter what I was going through, he was always there for me. So I, that's what, you know, inspired me to be who I am. 
It's good. Yeah. All right, that's it. That's, you want the next question? Me. All right. At the height of the tension between your ex and your spouse understanding and supportive enough. So uh, when you were going through what you was going through with your ex, was your spouse understanding and supportive enough? For this particular question, I would say yes. Um, me and my son's mother, we really didn't go through that much uh, because my sons are older. And I met my wife, can I get this right? 2001. Yeah, 2001, right after the uh, September 11 bombing. That's why I try to remember it. <laughs> and um, uh, so my son's mother, she was around, but she wasn't really around and she didn't have any authority because my son was older. So I think that played a, a good part, but both of them were very mature. Even though when we first started out, my son's mother, she put me through hell. You know what I mean, I didn't have a car. I would catch the bus to where she was and she would say, ah, too late, jump in the car and pull off. And I'm like, what the f You know what I mean? I almost started stealing cars because of that. Mm -hmm. I was like, I gotta get over there because you jump on the bus. We live on Ridge Road and had to go over there <laughs> by the police academy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So you had to catch like three buses and I catch three buses to get over there. And she say, you took too long. <laughs> and get in the car and pull off. And I'm like, Damn, what the, f you know what I mean? I'm hot. Wow. You know what I mean? And it's like, now I got to catch the bus back. You couldn't even give me a ride. So um, I went through all of the, uh, the shenanigans a lot earlier. Mm -hmm. And once my son started getting older, you know what I mean? That's when I met my wife. And my wife, uh, you know, she's she's a great woman. You know what I mean? Um, I'm glad I met her at the time that I met her because I would have messed it up. If I would met her two years before that, I would have messed that thing up. It was chaotic as hell. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> when, we first, when I first started going through this, man, I mean, mm -hmm. it was high emotions. Yeah. And even one woman going with another woman, everybody still got emotions tied. Yeah. It, it, was, it was heated. It was a heated battle all the time. You trying to be reasonable and rational and everybody wants you to take this approach. Mm -hmm. On this side, they want you to take this approach. On that side, they want you to take this approach. But mm -hmm. I can't go to a rule book and say on, on chapter two, page three, and say um, this is how you handle the situation. Mm -hmm. It yeah. ain't written. Mm -hmm. So everybody was emotionally involved and yeah. the kid was in the middle. And it was hell. It was a chaotic scene all the way around. It was, I couldn't do right on either side. Everybody had, everybody wanted you to do this and on this side, I want you to do this, and that side, I want you to do that. And nobody was reasonable and wanted to come in the middle. Everybody wanted what they wanted. They didn't give a damn how you felt. Yeah. <laughs> you trying to be a reasonable guy and trying to work it out and keep things smooth and down the middle wasn't what they wanted. Mm. They wanted you to call such and such a B. They wanted <laughs> you to go hard. And yeah. the kid, you worried about your child, so I can't call her no B. <laughs> and she rolled up in the house with my child. I might not see my baby again. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I know it ain't, ain't how you want me to say it, but I got to think about my child now. That's it. Take it all. Take all. And the I'm not putting information. In. I'm not putting you on the back burn. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings or nothing. But hey, babe, that's my child. <laughs> that's my that's my heart right there. I ain't gonna lose my heart like that. Just to please, just to please you and go to battle like that. I got to try to be smart mm -hmm. about this thing. How do I keep my heart? Mm -hmm. I love you to death, but I ain't trying to lose that child. Yeah. And I got to be diplomatic with this other side right here because I ain't trying to lose this child. And the other side wants you to go over here and want you to tell, tell your such and such, tell that B. I'm not telling that. You know, I'm not calling her no B and telling her that. You know what I'm saying? She's thinking off emotions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you thinking of logic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> tell her that's not your child and mm -hmm. she can't do this with the child and... No, I'm not telling her that because I want her to treat her like that's her that's child. Right. Exactly. So it was chaotic. Man. Everybody had their side. Everybody had what they wanted you to do to the other side. And it was always you was the one focused on the child. And I, I'm going to be honest, I think they were focused on themselves. Yeah. And I was focused on my child. So I, I took a lot. I took a beating on both sides because I love my child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think, you think that came from the um, from them being younger? Yeah, time, yeah, time, I time think. heals a lot. Time heals a broken heart, right? Because mm -hmm. when it first happened, everybody had a broken heart. You got a fresh start here, a broken heart here, and a kid in the middle of all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was chaotic. It was rough. That's it. But you got through it. Made you, you a better it. person. Time heals everything, right? That's it. That's it. Yeah. I mean, there was, I ain't going to say, uh, uh, I, I made mistakes, right, in yeah. the beginning with, you know, some of the things, because I could be hot-headed. Used to be. I'm a lot more patient now. But I think that, you know, 
in the beginning with all the court stuff, my wife was extremely helpful. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, extremely helpful. I mean, in hindsight, my advice would be to anybody to like go ahead and pay the money for a, a lawyer. But we did good in the beginning, you know, and then we didn't. And, you know, I think there was some of that, too. Like, you know, I think I think Lee, she she really wanted me to be go a little bit more hard sometimes, you know, on stuff. But I just felt like there wasn't no leverage in that, you know, like. uh she tried to get it, have a good relationship with my daughter's mom in the beginning, like try to become her friend so that they could, we could do this co-parenting thing. And I'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> it didn't work out so good, you know, I guess, you know, but, you know, I think there was times where I took heat, you know, obviously I took heat from my daughter's mom, but I didn't really necessarily care about that as much. Right. It was just like, Hey, I'm doing everything I need to do for my daughter. That should be enough. But I don't, I don't care that, you don't like this, right? Because you're not in control, right? And, but that was, I didn't have any other leverage. Like, like for us as men, we all want to have these good relationships as fathers. We want to have these good relationships with our kids mm -hmm. and we'll do anything for it. That's why I said, we'll, we'll allow ourselves to seem like we're being manipulated. Even we know we know what's going on and we're just like, I was going to do that anyway. So it don't matter that they're trying to get it. That's not really a big deal. And even if mm -hmm. you felt like they were trying to manipulate you, do something mm -hmm. you didn't have in your mind, you'd be like, that's not a big deal. I'm going to do that to make my my kid, especially I got a daughter, so I can only speak to having a daughter that's not in the house with me. I got a son. But anyway, so, you know, but I think that my wife definitely wanted me to be like, you know, be like an asshole at times when I didn't I didn't really think that the asshole benefited the situation. Mm. Then it changed. Mm -hmm. Then she wanted me to she would get it in her head to like, well, now's the time. Like after time went by, you should try to talk to her mother about this. I'd be like, and I didn't want to. Like I'd be like, that's not go that's gonna be fucked up for me. Like I'm not. That's not a good idea, right? And and every single time afterwards, I'd be like, you set me up. You set me up. Yeah, <laughs> it's a setup. And then so then it became then she because then she wouldn't talk to her at all. Like they they you know it was real early on. They just went they wouldn't communicate at all. They they didn't want to talk to each other. Period. And so then, you know, um, when she would come up with these ideas, she would say, hey, you should try talking to her about this. Try to have like she wanted to do this. Like every every once in a while, she pushed this like mature co-parenting thing on me to try to get me to instigate co-parent. And I finally was like, uh, I'm not you're not setting me up again. Not again. This, I'm not getting set up again. This is done. Right. But, yeah, it was it was it's it is tough juggling both. You know, yeah. it is tough. And so the one side I wasn't really worried about, but there was some push for me to go a little bit harder than I was. But I just felt like there was no leverage. I'm going to lose, lose anyway. Right. Like we're going to lose. We, we all got to understand that. Like yeah. it, as fathers, we're going to we're going to take a loss no matter what. That's why we get socks on Christmas. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think mine was my situation was a little different is because I did have a little of the leverage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I. Initially, I won custody of the kids. Now, there were battles after that um, with my ex trying to get custody, which, you know, I never really believed was really for custody, but. It hurt just, you. Yeah. Yeah, to yeah, put that right. nightmare yeah. in you. Yeah, because, you know, people's lives change, man. Sometimes you, you think you know what you want, you know what I'm saying? And you might not get that. But the path that you're on, you might realize, like, you know what? This is it. And I realized that, you know, when me and my ex separated and I had the children, she began to get a taste of that life of not having children. You know what I'm saying? And here's a woman that had children since she was 16 years old. You know what I'm saying? We started early. You know what I'm saying? Um, now she's at a time in her life where she don't have children. And the children are fine because they with me. It's not like. She lost the kids to the government or something like mm -hmm. that. You know what I'm saying? So I, I believe at one time that she enjoyed that freedom. You know what I'm saying? And that began to be wit. But just like you said, it still would be times where I'm happy, I'm, I'm cooling, and you want to take me to court, which, you know what I'm saying, nothing ever upheld out of the, I don't know, probably five or six times. You know That's what I'm good. saying? Uh, going through court um but you know at the height of it 
you know, to the question, Simone definitely, you know, she definitely was supportive. Um, she went to court with me, you know, even like we in two different states, she would travel and and be at court with me um, during all of that fraudulent bull crap. But so, yeah, no doubt she was there. She was definitely supportive. Mine's going to come to court because he's always having court. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, we gonna be, be going to another court. It. <laughs> It'll get worse for you. Hold yeah, on, yeah. now we just negotiated. We ain't got to start over. Luckily, like it was in the court because you got to uh, keep all weapons and everything. Yeah, out there. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, we can't go to court. <laughs> you stay home. I go to court. Yeah. <laughs> I thank God that I didn't have to go through um, a lot of that stuff. Um, uh, I've known Willie forever, so when he was going through it, we would talk sometimes, and I'd just be like, "This is crazy." And of course, knowing people and knowing that people went through this, like, you know, uh, he going through his stuff. And I'm like, man, it made me, my, my son mother, if she wouldn't have did what she did to me, I probably have more kids. Mm -hmm. She made it where I was like, under mm -hmm. no circumstances, am yeah. I having sex without a condom? Mm -hmm. And even when I had a condom on, I'm still pulling out. <laughs> you know what I mean? She, you know what I mean? I'm shook. Sure. You know yeah, what I mean? I so of course you. you know it's your livelihood. Yeah, I'm it's like, man, this, if I, I can't go through this no more. Yeah, you know what I mean. I so, um, I thank her for that because <laughs> I probably had about ten kids, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't know. God be the glory. Even some for you trolls talking life lost love. How to get to the bag? The clean theory. Mo Gen Lee talks. It's the hashtag.